Jesus, we exalt your name. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your power. Even tonight, we surrender our life. We give ourselves to you. Lead us, O oh God. Direct us, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Hallelujah. Give a shout to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Praise yes, the Lord. Yes, Lord. You are mighty on your throne. Please take your seat. You take are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Greetings in the name of Jesus. We are grateful for the first uh, night of the women of good tidings. Women of good tidings, thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. Women of good tidings. Amen. I want to challenge you tonight. There is a lot at stake. So, it's your call. Greatness is not embodied in the material things we have. The question that I always have is, what will eternity tell? What will eternity say? After you accomplished all and you are celebrated here on earth, will your entrance in heaven be exciting? Or will it be a place of Christ and regrets? Or will it be a place of joy to meet your maker? The world is changed by those who make their choice. Many of us have not made a choice. We are being led. Some people have decided what we should become. I always ask myself, how will heaven be like? How will eternity judge? How will my footsteps be seen after I'm gone? What will be the impact of my life in generations to come? It's a good thing to say I'm a millionaire. I have houses. I have cars. All of those I have. And I think you have. I looked how pretty you look tonight. And I can see the effort. I want you to make effort for eternity. Amen. Amen. How will eternity judge you? Mercy. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Can you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We are grateful that we are here with you. And you are with us. Touch our hearts. Change our direction. Help us, O oh Father, to impact our environment. 
Help us, O Father, to have eternity at heart. That as we break through, as we build formidable centers, give us the grace to have eternity at heart. To impact generations to come. Jesus said, I do what I see my father do. Father, open our eyes tonight that we may see you. The only true God and Jesus whom you have sent. We thank you, Father, for this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome all of you in the name of Jesus. Uh, thanks again to our beloved Pastor Kay for the great efforts. I had the, the evokers on Wednesday. We were together for the whole day here. And I said, the desire of my heart is one that they may impact and influence the church. And I want to say the same message to you. You know, I don't know if it's, if it's women's selfishness, but maybe let me go there. The church looks different. Maybe Pat Patelem Matohoka for Jadi Tapi Halin. Hallelujah. Amen. It looks nice. Hey, go, Bill. But what stops us to look nice every day? King is a receipt, and I will remember to come in. Upon Albert, one was a tap. Hey. They are those who don't like to wash. But I can see today that you have taken your bath and, hey, they, and, and you have taken your shower. <laughs> I mean, the church looks nice. Every day the church looks like manly, manly. Today it looks very balanced. <laughs> Am I telling somebody? Amen. I hope the Lord is touching some hearts. Yeah, there must be a conviction somewhere. Amen. Amen. Whosoever I have done this, I want the name and address. And ask, do you, how do you want eternity? How will heaven look at you? Okay, let's get into our theme. It's a woman's war. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1 to 7. I'll try and be quick and short. There's no amen, so I'll be long. <laughs> I, I say you don't like quick and short messages. You know, you know what I was thinking? When I was standing there, I said, why can't this be all night? It's like it's evoked only that say yes. <laughs> I was saying, why can't it be all night like this? And I greet all the, the men, the brothers who love Jesus more. Who are here. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in the Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit this to faithful men 
who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must enjoy hardship as a good soldier of Christ. Christ is hardship. Christianity is hardship. Yeah, there's no amen. I say Christ, Christianity <laughs> is, is hardship. Not the hardship you think. No, serving the Lord. Yeah, because we will distinguish these things. No one engages in warfare, entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. There are rules of engagement. There are rules of engagement. The hardworking farmer must first partake of the crops. Consider what I say. And may the Lord give you understanding in all things. I want to talk about family. One of our pillars is family. Uh, we have seven pillars. Some people have forgotten them. There's no amen. Amen. Mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We said as a church we must impact family life. There is a book, Seven Mountain Prophecy. I will, I will encourage you to get one if you don't have it. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to challenge you today. Let's, let's understand what is our role. And if we understand our role, we will succeed. I've said this before. That I see our children suffer because we have failed to do the basic things. It has been a slightly difficult week for me. Part of it was, was just the difficulty of the subject itself. Fathers have failed and are struggling. Fathers have failed and are struggling. Can you say it? Fathers are failing. Have failed and they are struggling. Yes, so I want to challenge you to say what is the role of a woman. Nations are built by women. Every culture on earth is secured by women. Fathers, but dresses, but women are the main builders. But fathers, but fathers, but dresses. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to challenge you that you are not going to look back and regret the choice you have made. The impact and failure of fathers is seen in many parts of the family. And in many parts of the community and the society we find ourselves. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6. It says, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. 
And it will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the hearts of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Listen, already the curse is here. Yeah, the curse is here. So I want to challenge every woman, every girl child, that know your role. Because if you know your role, you will build a generation for God. Yeah, you will build a generation, a righteous generation. I said you will build a generation for God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says I will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But today there is a disconnect between fathers and their children. So let me let me let me talk to women and mothers. What is your contribution? In the in the relationship between the father and the children. What is your can you ask the woman sitting next to you say, what is your contribution? Yeah. Mercy. Amen. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 4. 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 4. Children are turned against their parents. They are turned. They are turned. You know, people have come to believe the media than the word of God. Okay, let me give you a picture. The media portrayed Winnie Madikizala Mandela as an evil woman. Somebody that we know. Mm. But after she died, mm. we, knew, we knew, they told us, those who portrayed as evil person. They said we, we had to come with a strategy because we realized that she's forceful she has decided she's not going to side with us. So I want to say to you, your success should not soften your heart to the intents and the purposes and the calling of God. I'm going to ask somebody. Amen. The media, uh, media. Any, anything that comes very strong in the media don't believe it. When, when we grew up, we were told that newspapers lie. Now today there are blockers. Uh, I think uh, Malema had a meeting recently. Malema had a meeting recently. I like his fortitude. Nobody's going to speak for you. Don't ever that you can make peace with Satan. Even if Satan comes to your party. I agree. The Bible says, he prepares a table before me. It means the enemies are there. They are present. So never be deceived that the enemy has come to your party. He's the one cheering you. Imagine somebody. Amen. You must have, you must make up your mind. That I'm going to play my role. I'm going to fight my fight. There are many spheres. I was saying, you have, you have to juggle many balls. Yeah. 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 
You must be a mother. Maybe we need to go to Proverbs. Proverbs 31. She's a political person. She's a political person. She's a community person. She's a fully committed parent. And a very committed wife. There is no part of the community you don't find this woman. She is doing business. So all these things, this, don't, don't, don't read one thing in my message. I'm, I'm trying to say it. When you play your part as a, as a woman, all other parts will fall into place. I'm going to somebody. Amen. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 4. But know this, that Even in the sin. last days, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves. Tell your neighbor, look at me. Mm. This verse talks about me. Men shall be lovers of themselves. Yeah, I was talking to one, one young man. I said, you are too clean. You are too clean. <laughs> For my disliking. <laughs> Mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I had a I had a woman who came and said, My husband will not do anything in the house. Where is that mirror? We are fighting for Murut. Even Rasta is not that clean. Mercy. Amen. Those who have ears to hear, they hear. Baba For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and thankful and holy and loving and forgiving slanderous without self-control brutal despisers of good Traitors. Barikis, the traits. Traitors. Barikis. It's like Judas Iscariot. Judas. Headstrong. Barikis. How do you get married while you are headstrong? Hey. Haughty. Haughty. <laughs> by, by lovers of pleasure. Rather than lovers of God. Family and morality are key to the life and the health of the society. Amen. The failure to keep morality <laughs> and family <laughs> values <laughs> will lead to an Immoral ills. Amen. Now, these are the challenges we have. When fathers are absent, when mothers don't buttress and stand together to help. Social ills leads to broken families. Amen. And broken families leads to lawlessness. 
malapa a thubegile go a tlhoka a ira gore go tlhoke molao i was talking to somebody one day ke ne ke bolela lo mongwe ka letsatsi le leng was a taking a person of my age who has other children o ne a tlhasela motho a go lekana le nna o anang le bana ba ba i said to the person you have, ke go motho you have small children o na le bana ba ba nyane your children are darlings is bana ba ga go ba ratega i said they are going to grow As of now you are playing. I was saying as of now you are playing. Instead of you coming, somebody's house is on fire. Instead of you coming to aid and assist. You are spreading slander. You are spreading rumors. You are exaggerating the sin and when the fall. Your children are coming. I don't know if you are hearing what I'm saying. We are at an advantage. We are at an advantage. Yes, we are mm. in church. Mm. I've raised so many people. Not for gain. Not for profit. I think it's your turn. Learn to raise other people's children. Yeah, learn, learn to adopt. There, when I look this side, it's children this side. When I look this side, it's mature, mature persons. Do you get it? Huh? Yeah, they compartmentalize themselves. This is young young adults. Ke ba ba golunyana. I don't know you are, you are hearing what I'm saying. I'm, I'm repeating this with intent. Ke buseletsa se ka maikemisetsa. If you are not going to help now. You will not get help. There's nothing. The greatest failure of any parent is the inability to raise responsible children. It's, it's the greatest crush any parent can have. So I'm saying in your priorities, priorities as you pursue your career, Don't forget there is life. Yeah, one woman we grew up knowing. She decided she's going to study. We just petosa From university she never stopped. We lay university as First first degree. A grad degree ya mathomo. Honors. Agra honors. Masters. Masters. Did a doctorate. Agra le doctorate. And did another specialty. I did a specialty the same. Possibly 14, 15 years. Me ngwa ga ifo. Away, away from husband and children. A le khole le bana le monna wa gago. And at the end of it all. Ka ko mafelong a dilotse ka. Coming from the graduation when she said, "Now I'm going to start to live a life." She met her death, untimely death. Oh, Jesus. She passed on. One of the most painful things. She says, no, I neglected my husband. I neglected my children. What will it profit? Uh, I'm going to give you an example. My family, my mother always loved to have more children. So we were about 10. My mother had three of her own. But we, we always had many children in the house. Taking care of everybody else. For some of us, We felt as we were growing neglected to some extent. We, 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 we wanted, we wanted love to say, "Oh, we wish it was just us." 
But we did know our mother was helping us. Nere sa itu hore mewari na wari chusa. To love others. Hore rara te baba we. I'm saying to you. Kere huli na. As you achieve. Rente utwe la pili. Your children. Ba na baga u. Will need somebody to take care of them. Ba to toka mutu wa ba toko mela. So on your path to your breakthroughs. Rente we na u ya u ya tuwe lo pili nya ga u. Make sure that you are taking others along with you. Are you listening? If you are married, have pity on your husband. Most married women don't have compassion. They are very nice before they get married. <laughs> They, they are girlish. Yeah, they'll be very nice. Then they change you into monsters. It's a women's war. If the husband makes a mistake, he will never be forgiven. Are I, I know you don't understand. Listen, listen, let's go to the book of Malachi chapter 2. We're already together. You have to have an understanding that it's not about you. I use an example and I think I need to correct it today. The story was a young woman came to the mother-in-law and said or her mother and said my husband. And so she had complaints about the husband. And the mother, the mother said, or the mother-in-law said, it has been our life. Go back to your house and build your house. Mm. Mm. Can you tell the woman sitting next to you and say, stop complaining. You are, you are failing, you are failing your house. You are failing your house. Can you say it again? Go back to your house. We have a saying in Tswana, I don't know English for those who are in England. It says, Mangwa no Tswara Tipamo Vokhalo. Interpret. <laughs> Hallelujah. They say a woman hold the knife on the sharpened edge. Yeah. Most people don't know how to build. They think. But most women are thinking life is happiness. You are not married for your happiness. It's not there. I know, I know you don't like it. This is not a soapy. I don't know what soapies you are watching. What soapies are you watching now? <laughs> Die hard. Skim Sam. Skim Sam is a, is a soapy. Yeah, the South African ones, Kibuloi and all of those things. So, I, I, we used to watch Central America, Mailori, Nelo Mujolo, left, right, center. We used to watch the American ones where it was all about dating. Imagine somebody. Amen. Can we read together the book of Malachi chapter 2? I want to read Verse 15. More verse 15. But did he not make them one? A remnant of the spirit 
Yeah, the remnant of the spirit. Just a just spirit. Yeah, it's a little bit. And 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 why one? La ba mo ya oti. He seeks yes. La ba mo ya oti. To be one spirit is an effort. Ko ba mo ya oti ki utanti libereg. Yeah. To be to be one spirit. Ko ba mo ya oti. It's easy, but we have made it difficult. He seeks a godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. Take heed to your spirit. Most people, their spirit is not right. They were showing rates of divorce across the world. All the nations where people choose their own spouses. One nation, <laughs> is 85% divorce rate. What do you think? In South Africa, we are still between 15 and 20. Most South Africa, we are still between 15 and 20. For Two might fall by the wayside. Obviously, others might be working with one leg. You know? <laughs> so what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you he says here, take heed to your spirit. Most people don't care for their soul. Make up your mind while you are married. Because if you understand that, greatness might become out of your family. Power might be coming out of your family. Powerful generations might come from your family. It's that you are children. I could say things, but if I say it, you will not hear me well. You will quote me. And there are people now writing about me, blogging, so I... I, <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing. I said, am I, am I that serious? Hey, you can't think it's serious, so. Am I that serious that you should write about me? It's serious, so. Mercy. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. I'm saying to you. Kirohulina. The Bible says, therefore, take it to your spirit and let none deal treacherously. That word, I wish one of our pastors was here. Where is Pastor Bob? Deal, he says, and let none deal treacherously mm. with the wife of his youth. Amen. It's the only amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so you have to understand that we have an enemy. Let me, run, let me run up and, and, and challenge you. That family has an enemy. And the enemy in the family. Satan has intended to pull the family down. And the greatest weapon he uses is the word rejection. If, if I start making altar call on rejection, there's no time I've made altar call and I don't have almost the whole church coming. Psalm 68. I was talking to somebody, I said, make up your mind not to be offended. 
Specifically, don't be offended by your husband. Oh. But the husband loves you. Yeah. He's the one who says, I love you. Or unless it's the other way around. I don't know. <laughs> I, had, I had a girl to say, is it, is it wrong to propose a person? I said, listen. You don't know the burden of love. I can tell you the burden of love. The one who said, I love you has the greatest burden. Unfortunately, most women don't understand the burden that the man has. Yeah. Mm. So they say, they say, I don't love him. I, I love, love, I love so and so. Nice. Mm. Enjoy. <laughs> the burden of love his provision. Yeah. That's mm. why there are some housewives, they don't have to think about anything because somebody told them, somebody, somebody told them, I love you. Oh, they are happy with one salary. They are happy. Yeah, they have two panties, they are fine. <laughs> two bras. One, one or two. They wash it when they sleep and they put it on when they... <laughs> what is happiness to you? Okay, let me tell a story. <laughs> I see you don't want to listen to my stories. Right? Listen. Happiness is not in the abundance of things. If I know somebody loves me, I will do everything within my power to make sure that their love increases for me. But my little experience is that those who have been told we love you, they are the ones who have been told we love you. They will be fighting the love. Yeah, they are fighting. They are fighting. Balwa. I'm preaching. Kiarera. I see you don't like what I'm saying. Alera te seke se bulela. You can remain with your many brass. You can remain. Leka nna ka di brass ale na tse dintshi. Nobody, nobody. <laughs> Listen, there are a lot of there are a lot of people. Somebody said to me, it's a true story. I wish I met you before. I wish I met you before. I will still be married. Yeah, because I told them it's not it's not about the house. We need a house. We will fight to build. And it's an important part. But if your focus is only the car or the house or the sofas, now that you have already the sofa, no, no, Satan changes. You, you are staying in a two bedroom, no, number two bedroom, and you are doing well. And then you are fighting, you have three bedrooms or four bedrooms. Now, now you are having other challenges, you want to fill the house. No, the problem is your heart. Because you will never be happy. It doesn't matter what is given to you. Because contentment is not part of the deal. So I'm just saying. Okay, verse 4. Psalm 68, verse 4. Psalm 68, verse 4. Verse 5. I think it's verse 6 in essence. More verse 6. Yes, it's verse 6. It's a father of the fatherless. Okay, uh, verse 6, please. 
He says, God says the solitary families and brings out those who are bound into prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in the dry land. I, I, missed, I missed my verse. Let's go to verse 5. Verse 5. Yes. No. It's verse 8. Thank you. Verse 8. No. The verse talks about a woman forsaken. Hallelujah. Amen. They will find it for me. But fine. Let me Amen. finish my message so that we Amen. can go. So you have to understand that rejection is the main target of the enemy. Satan will do everything within his power to make sure that there is no happiness and joy. Rejection is defined as refusal to accept. Refusal to accept. To consider. To submit to. To hear. To receive. Or admit. Amen. So I want to challenge all of us. That if, if, if we are going to fight a good war, we must go back and check ourselves. For the young woman, what is the desire of your heart? I have a lot of young women in the church. I pray consistently that they get married. Your heart has to be right. I've seen people get married forcing it. Is that the women don't tell the truth? There are married women here. They forced it. When I look to the right, Amen. Amen. If you change your attitude, your marriage will be nice. If you can decide to be a girl again, your marriage will be nice. All the people who are dancing here in France, uh, they have no issues. Those who are married, they are saying. <laughs> I remember one woman came to church with a very nice, handsome husband. They were sitting in the, in the midst of many. After couple of days, the woman came and complained. Says the young women don't know how to dress in the church. You remember this time ago? Crop top. And uh, the painting with a, with a robe. G-string. What do you call it? G-string. G-string. <laughs> That's what the woman was discussing with me in the office. <laughs> so I asked her, <laughs> have, have you been a girl before? <laughs> can, you ask, can you ask the one sitting next to you, have you been a girl before? <laughs> So I said, I said, I said, this is my answer. I'm preaching. 
I'm saying to you, as compared to complaining, adopt, adopt somebody. You know, there are many people in the church. There are new people that are coming into the church. Are we going to correct every person? Correct every person. So I say, oh, did you see the person? He says, not one. There are a few of them. So I say, why don't you become a mother? Mm. Can, why you you him Can you tell your why, why don't you become a mother? Why you him what do you better an apostle with? I mean, what will I do? Should I come and say, like it again? please don't put on G-string? What a shock. Hey. Be a mother. Teach the child. You are the one to take her by the hand. And say, my daughter. You are dressed properly mm. for the wrong occasion. No, you have dressed well for the wrong occasion. Yes. Yes. That to try and make it a political party statement. Engage and involve everybody else that people don't dress well in the church. You are failing in your responsibility as a mother. No, you should show maturity. Take the girl by the hand. I don't know where you want to dress. Somebody was complaining about the worship team. He says they are scared is above the knee. And these are not men who are complaining. <laughs> no, we So I said, Gary, these are children. Give a number to Above the knee, it's not a big deal. Now, one, I said, I'm a whole to the righteous. All things are righteous. To the pure, everything is pure. Amen. But I'm just saying to the women in the church, before you point fingers, look, ask yourself, what is my contribution? How can I impact the life of this young woman? What is funny about women is that they forget where God has taken them. I told the women in the church, I said, we used to have purple cloths and whatever. Once in a while I see them. They will be covering people. No, they will be covering people. I said, I will never come back to your church if you do that to me. Did you know, did you know, people are comfortable in their skin the way they are dressed. Why should you make somebody uncomfortable? Why should uncomfortable? Amen. I say they are not hearing what I'm saying. You are a mother in Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to fight rejection with everything that we have. And destroy the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let me share something with you. The good general chapter 2. Good general chapter 2. And chapter 3. Chapter 3. Hallelujah. Amen. You must fight to avoid foolish things. Yes. Mm. There are things that women will fight for that are very foolish. If you can't afford the hair, don't make it an issue. Or if you don't like, if you don't like it. Mm, I, I, I listened to somebody say, yeah, 
me. I like natural hair. I like natural like people. I mean, I've been African. I've come to accept myself. I said, it's, 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 your, it's your issue. It's your, it's your preference. Live with it. Enjoy, enjoy yourself. Don't make it a political statement. It, it is your issue. Let's not f- make foolish things. Fight to be a good Christian. Yes, be a good Christian. Fight to be led by the Spirit of God. Never lose the agency. I said when we started, I wonder how heaven will read you. And will come. We have a boy called, I preached a message about people. I think all of them are below 15 years. Five young people who have changed the world permanently. South African one, Nkosi Johnson. Nkosi Johnson. Do you like it or not? Nkosi Johnson Johnson. died of HIV and AIDS. AIDS. But for every time they talk about HIV and AIDS, Nkosi Johnson was a formidable fighter. He was a child, but he was a formidable fighter. I wonder how heaven received him. He fought very powerful political parties and people. He changed, he changed how people think. That is not only the people who are sleeping around, who are taken and whatever. That HIV AIDS affects the lowest of the low. HIV AIDS affects the lowest of the low. Changed our life. Come to somebody. Amen. I'm saying fight for agency. Hmm. Fight to be spiritual. Most women are spiritual. Fight to be spiritual. Most of the problem you have in your family. It's because you have stopped being spiritual. You remember before you got married, you were determined to change your husband. So what happened? Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? Yes. Fight to walk in love. I said fight to walk in love. Fight to enter your ministry. If you don't force it, you will never fulfill your ministry. Here, I'm not talking about being a pastor. Because Johnson was not a pastor. You Johnson might not even relate what she did to eternity. But I'm saying fight to enter ministry. Fight 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 to enter ministry. Fight to fight to stay in your calling. There are people that I feel strongly they are called of God. Yeah, but they will resist the call or they don't see it. Yeah. I knew somebody who was old who wanted to come into the ministry. I told him, I said, whose burden are you going to be? You see, I came to the ministry as a young person. This is my 42nd year. I've been in the ministry for 32 years. So, it's not something I'm doing now. I've suffered. I've been ridiculed. I lived without. Oh, one time, when I came full time into the ministry, all my cars were stolen. 
Then they get the ready in full time. It's not a job. It's a reality. I became almost destitute. But most people wouldn't know. They would look at you and say, oh, this guy. Please, mm. fight to enter. Mm. Food is free. And sleep is free. The rich try to sleep, but it doesn't come. We can go under the bridge. You'll find the guys are sleeping like they are in a palace. Mercy. I say fight to stay in your calling. Fight to associate with great men of God. I always think about the Trinity. I say, man, man. I, I saw a vision. I think I told you. I saw a vision of a thousand years, thousand years from now. Still fires, flames of fire on earth. As the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. People laying down their life. Being willing not to marry. Or to be married. They, they, they gave themselves fully to the way. There's no amen. Amen. <laughs> fight, fight for the anointing. Fight to find a good partner. Yeah. Are you listening? Your husband might not look like it. <laughs> but if you make up your mind, you can turn their hearts towards God. Fight to prosper. Yes. Mm. Fight against negative aspects of your temperament. You are a phlegmatic. Permanently. You wouldn't, you wouldn't move. I remember one time brushing my teeth. And I said, <coughs> and Scotella stuck on the On the basin. I opened the tap as hard as I can. I see this story is not my own story. It's like everybody has experienced it. And Scott Lazar, I get some money. Hey. <laughs> the flame said, I'm not going anywhere. Fight your maleness and your femaleness. Amen. Fight against tribalism. Mm. I remember one woman tribalism. says, me, me, I want to be married by this tribe. Yeah. I said, you'll soon discover that your tribe doesn't have enough men. Who like a woman like you? <laughs> And it's very funny that the, the, the tribe you, you despise, they are the ones who are coming. They are the ones. Who are the ones. Mercy. May the Lord have mercy on us. I want to challenge you. Adjust yourself. Just Let me use the word that I use for the for the for the evokers and then I Colonize. Mm. You see, when you colonize a thing, mm. 
colonize, colonize your husband with mm. good behavior. Mm. Let your husband be worried. worried about your good behavior. Mm. <laughs> Let him be shocked that when he, when he was expecting you to react. Yeah, surprise, surprise the guy. Hey, Mama Kaze. Hallelujah. Amen. Mercy. Amen. Colonize the church. Colonize the church. How the church looks today is amazing. Mm. I'm being honest with you. When I entered here, I said, this reminded me of Emmanuel Christian Church before COVID. Emmanuel Christian Church before COVID. The atmosphere, the excitement, the joy, the fellowship. Why can't you just be sweet and nice? Why can't you have a sweet spirit of Auntie Sarah? Why can't you have a sweet spirit of Abraham, my master? my master? Mm, Jesus. Mercy. Amen. Every eye closed, every head bows. We are here this evening. You have visited us, or it's your first time coming. Or you have been coming to church. But the Holy Spirit has been talking to you. The Bible gives us a very clean picture. That God loved us. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. But have an everlasting life. God wants you to have a great life. God wants to prosper you. God wants to establish you. I want to pray together with you. If you are here this evening, you say, Muruti, I want to receive Jesus. You say, Pastor, I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to be a child of God. I want to start afresh again. I want God to start with me. I surrender and give my life to him. I want to pray with you. If you are that person, I want Jesus. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to be a child of God. Lift your right hand and lift it And I'll pray together with you. God bless you. Is that a God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Is there somebody else? I want to make right with God. I want to be born again. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to enter into this eternity that I may leave a footprint as well. This is my last call. I want to make right with God. I want to be born again. I want to be a child of God. Wherever you are seated, you can lift up your hand. God bless you, I see your hand. We are going to pray. What about you? Your heart is talking to you. It's not necessarily your heart, it's the Holy Spirit talking to you. Are you responding to him? Or you are rejecting him? Is there somebody else? We are going to pray. God bless you. I see your hand. I'm going to ask that we stand on our feet. Those who lifted their hands, please come on the altar. We're going to pray together. Don't be intimidated. Ashes, help us, please. Please come. We're going to pray together. Come on.
I make the same decision many years ago. I was 16 years of age. I came so many times forward until a friend says, I feel my sins every day. When they answer call, I feel my sins, so I go. Amen. Amen. I'll ask we are going to pray. I'll ask us to lift up our hands. Yes, it's the only sign of surrender. I'll ask of you to follow me in prayer. I'll ask the whole church to join us. Can we say, Father? Can we say, Father? In the name of Jesus. I thank you tonight for your love. Your kindness that you have shown towards me. Today, I have taken a step of faith to stand before your altar and to declare you as Lord. With my own mouth, I speak that you are Lord. With my own heart, I believe that you have risen from the dead. Today I pray, Father, resurrect my life again. Today, wash my sins with your blood. Make me your child. I thank you, Father, for this grace. You can say, Satan, tonight, I cut ties with you. Take what is yours. I belong to Jesus. You can say, Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Lead and guide me. Convict me. Convict me. And direct my life. I thank you tonight that I have come back home. I thank you, Father, for this love. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for this, your people. I commit them into your hands. I pray for the power and the grace of your Holy Spirit. Father, bless and prosper them. The choice and the decision they've made. As you have kept us, Lord, may you keep them. Holy Spirit, we pray that you still speak and work in the lives of men. Turn our hearts towards you. Holy Spirit, we pray, illuminate the darkened part of our life, the hardened part of our life. May you take the heart of stone and bring back the heart of flesh. Holy Spirit, breathe a new life in us once and more in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. If you turn around, there's somebody behind you. They're just going to take your particulars and then you go back to your seats. Thank you. Amen. Powerful.
please take your seat. Thank you so much for waiting until now. There is more to do. I was just reminded that in my youthful years, or as I was growing, this was the time the preacher was coming to preach. There was no electricity where I stayed. Yeah. No electricity whatsoever. No. But I'm thinking we should do a conference cross night. I, I, feel, I feel robbed. I feel robbed. 